Hey everybody, welcome to Router 2 Brief. I know I did a video yesterday. I've been out of the loop for a while. As a lot of you know, I did a video explaining why. Thank you very much for your well wishes. Uh, don't know what's going on quite yet, but I just wanted to do a video on my coral, um, or lack of. A lot of you guys have asked questions about it. And basically what I did was I was giving a visual of how to do like when you buy a new coral it's very important when you buy anything for your main saltwater tank known as a display tank you never want to trust where you get it from meaning coral fish cleanup crew like snails crabs the water could be contaminated and filled with parasites i started my channel mainly because um, I got infected with ick parasite and marine velvet and it was killing my fish. I would keep purchasing fish. I didn't know what was going on and they would die every three days. Every time I came home, someone was dead. I bought a new clownfish, dead. I bought another clownfish, two days later, dead. So, <clears throat> long story short, um, you have to quarantine everything, okay? And when... You want to have a set, I know it's kind of a hassle, but I wanted to talk about my star polyps. I'm getting off on a tangent and how my coral are coming back to life. Um, the star polyps and the frog spawn only. So what I did was to demonstrate, oh, I have a German shepherd on my back. <clears throat> what are you doing? Can you say hi? Hey, beast. <laughs> All right. So... What I did to drive the point home is whenever I got a new fish, I would put it in a separate quarantine tank. Like one of these little guys, I have a, you know, a 10 gallon tank for the larger tanks that you see here. I have a 20 gallon long tank and you want to keep them in there for six weeks. Dose with a little bit of copper solution to kill any parasites. And then after eight weeks, you put them in this tank. You never want to introduce anything. And a lot of people say, you know, your, fit, your tank will always have ick in it. That's bullshit because if you, you know, don't introduce it or don't allow it in your tank, I don't understand how it will magically appear. Like if you filled this aquarium with 125 gallons of salt water, which is what it is, 100, 125 gallon tank, and then you put dry rock in it from a shelf so there's no live rock in here there there's nothing living it, it's never going to have anything living until so you start the cycle you put some shrimp in from the butcher or some meat so it decays so it starts the cycle of bacteria so the, think of your tank as a clean room like an er okay you're doing surgery everyone's scrubbed down this is your ER. You're not gonna have some guy come in off the street who's a construction worker who's been working in grease and dirt all day walking around the ER. It's, thanks Jeff, how you doing man? It's just not, it's just not good, okay? So just like you wouldn't have that dude come in to the ER, you don't wanna introduce any fish, brand new, or corals, or inverts, or anything into this tank. So. What I did was I have a 10 gallon tank for new fish. The reason why I say eight weeks is because parasites, if there's not fish around, hey Gabriel, if there's no fish to eat, the parasites will die. And their life cycle is about five weeks. So I keep them in for a solid eight weeks in quarantine with a little bit of copper solution by coopermine because that kills the parasites if there's any on the fish, okay? That's that. Now, copper will kill corals, so you don't want to do that. So instead, you have a separate quarantine tank, and that has no copper in it. You use that just for your new coral and your cleanup crew. So if any of the water that is contaminated that comes in that bag uh, is introduced into that quarantine tank, if there's parasites in it, they will die because there's no fish to eat. You want to have a separate tank for corals and snails and inverts, starfish, all that good stuff, okay? 
So, long story to drive this point home. When I was explaining how to quarantine your coral, I didn't have any coral, so I put all of my coral in my 40 gallon, I'm sorry, my 22 gallon, I have a 20 gallon and a 22 gallon long, I believe, and I used that as a quarantine tank and I put some live rock in it to show you what it would look like. I demonstrated the setup for a, you know, coral quarantine. What's up, Rebel Reefer? Well, I bought a few Mexican turbo snails and I put them in the tank with all my coral and um, long story short, three out of the four Mexican turbo snails died. And when snails die, especially larger ones, they're like little toxic bombs in your aquarium. Completely destroyed my water and I didn't catch it in time. I saw my corals, I didn't check on it in like three days, four days, and my corals were half the size. They weren't looking good and the snails were dead. It was nasty. I, put, I took the snails out and there was no more snail in the shell except black gook that poured out into the water of the quarantine. It was disgusting, it reeked, it was so nasty. So anyway, all my corals died. Everything died. And people have said, well, you know, you probably didn't, no, no. That's the reason why they died, okay? So I was, Proving a point using all my coral, pretending, hey, let's pretend I got all these new coral from a store. Let's put them in the quarantine with these new Mexican turbo snails. And everything died. I had a one head that was a Duncan coral. And that one head turned into, I don't know, 50 heads? That's still dead. That was a gorgeous gorgeous coral dead it's still in there thinking it'll come back and i was going to throw all my rock away to be honest with you but um i'm getting some coralline algae again i was like really really in my 75 gallon tank i had a lot of coralline algae and now that's the purple on the rock so coralline algae is always a sign that your aquarium's got really great chemistry I now do a water change every two weeks. I don't have any sand on the bottom, as you can see. It doesn't bother me too much. It makes it so much easier to clean these power heads. I got a high door power head right here. Just blows off the, there's a little bit of sand, but a millimeter deep, it does nothing. But these power heads blow off the floor and it just blows all the detritus, which is fish waste and uneaten food around and gets taken out. But the good news, like two weeks ago, it took about six weeks. As you can see, I, they were completely gone. Nothing on the rock, but my star polyps are coming back. I am so happy. I was going to throw this rock away. They're coming back really slow. Um, I turned the light on just a half an hour ago. They're normally larger and longer than this, but I'm really happy about this. After about five weeks, I was going to throw this rock away because I was so fed up and I just kind of wanted to start over um, because it's a small rock, so I wouldn't miss out on too much bacteria. But I decided, you know, screw it. Let me just keep it in there. I'm very stubborn. In fact, that uh, Duncan Coral that had one head that turned into like 52 heads, it was amazingly beautiful and gorgeous. It's gone, and I'm still stubborn. I'm keeping it in there thinking, um, you know, thinking it'll come back. Maybe it will, but I got some um, purple algae, the coralline algae encrusted on the rock, which is great. And then this rock, I've got some star polyps coming on, on this one as well. So I'm very happy about that. You can see. So, that's the deal. Everyone's doing really good. <sighs> On the back here, you can't see it, but someone knocked it over. I've got one head left of a huge, I had a huge 8-inch 
wide frog spawn. And uh, it was massive, very lush. I love the frog spawn. And you know what, Dad? I have one tiny head left. It's gonna take months for that thing to grow. But um, everyone's doing really well and that's what my tank looks like. I know it's kind of bare and boring. I do kind of miss the sand, but I am used to it. With no sand, um, it adds three more inches of swimming room for the fish and it's a lot less to clean. There's no detritus trap. There's nowhere for the food to hide. The three power heads I have are two high doors. Um, and an MP40 by Vortec. That's all I've got. And uh, yeah, again, it looks kind of boring. But I wanted to do the experiment, I don't know, eight months ago, no sand. And it's great. In fact, my Mandarin, my Mandarin Gobi, you know, those guys are picky eaters. With no sand, he's still alive and he's plump. So all those little amphipods and copepods, they're thriving in these rocks. I'm going to probably add another dry rock to the tank. Maybe somewhere around here or it's here. Just to add a little more home for the copepods and amphipods. But uh, that's the deal right now. Just wanted to give you guys an update that the... Um, tank is clean the fish are happy see that little guy right there he was just there he goes he swam right underneath that rock um, you know what for bubble algae you can get yourself a green emerald crab you know I don't really like the bare bottom look either but I'm, I'm I didn't really um, but I'm used to it in fact you know what you could do you could just get like a five pound bag of sand which I was thinking about doing and just putting it on the bottom just so it's like a millimeter thick just so it looks like a sand bed but it won't be enough to trap anything you know and you can just vacuum it out sure you're getting rid of all that you know biology that is needed by the tank to survive but guess what I don't have any of that stuff in the tank right now um, so and everyone everyone's thriving just with the rocks being in here to be honest and look I don't have much rock you know, everyone's like, hey, you got to have like 10 pounds rock per one gallon of water or whatever it is. Hey, Dustin, what's up, dude? Hey, man, you know what? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. I hope you're doing well. Um, so I barely have any rock because I want a lot of swimming space for these guys. This is a six foot long tank and it's uh, 125 gallon. So, you know what, people are like, hey, you should get like a 256 or 265 or whatever it is. I can't really remember right now, sorry. And, uh, well, my tank will be taller then. I'm not a fan of tall tanks. If I got another tank, which I don't think I'm going to do now, um, I would get an 8-foot long tank to give them an extra 2 feet of swimming space. 10-foot long would be ideal. I was looking at someone to custom make a 10-foot long tank, but uh, 6 feet that's that's what I want and they're not crowded everyone's cool everyone gets along great still have five clownfish in here they never fight everyone's cool um, 75 gallon that was my last tank I love it 125 gallon is the perfect size I don't feel that I want to really upgrade and it's just awesome it's big enough it's gorgeous in person and I love it and on top of the tank oh Jack he's right here I'll show him to you. He's poor little guy. He's blind. He's by daddy. He knows his way around the house. But his diabetes and his blindness, he's doing well. But he just kind of sleeps all day. Thanks, Mandy, for asking. Um, and on top of the tank, if you can see, all I have is one 48-inch LED light. It just sits on the top. It's a Phoenix, F-I-N-N-E-X. And it is awesome. When I had corals in here, I had a massive T5 with four bulbs, and it was way too bright. You could see the house lit up from the street. My corals were doing all right, but you know what? When I got rid of that, and I just got this 48 inch, it's a six foot long tank, 60 inches. There's a foot on either side of the thing, as you can see. It was completely awesome for my corals. They thrived. And in fact, these star polyps are coming back to life quite well after five or six weeks with just this light. And it's not too expensive 
I highly, highly recommend picking up this Phoenix light. It's way less on electricity use. It's very light. And in fact, it's just sitting on top of the center beam of this 125 gallon marine land tank. Um, plenty enough light, very soothing to the eyes. It's got two light switches on and off for the blue and on and off for the white. So I always have the blue and the white. What happened to my tank? Well, John, watch this video from the beginning and you'll hear because I already explained it. Um, so that's the deal. I just wanted to share with you guys, kind of hang out with you live. I'm still doing the channel. I've not stopped. It's just that there's a lot of things going on in life and a few other channels I have to pay attention to on YouTube plus my day job and family stuff and everything else. So I will be doing videos once a week, once every two weeks, probably at the most. There's not much really to tell you guys about, but I'll keep in touch with you. Thanks, man. Useless reefer, thank you. Um, the tank looks great. Fish are very happy and healthy. And... Uh, Oh, what do I feed the naso tang? I feed all the tangs the same thing. I go to the grocery store and I get bok choy from the fruit and vegetable area. Hey, Dave. Or I get, uh, what was it, bok choy and collard greens. And I just put one big leaf in every day or sometimes every other day. And they all nibble on that. So they get their greens and it's really inexpensive. Some people say their fish love it. Most people say their fish don't touch it. My fish go crazy for it. Hey Dave, missed you guys too. It's good to see you. That's why I wanted to do live so we can kind of hang out. So you can get like, I don't know, 12 to 20 big, and I mean big, the size of a Frisbee, collard green or bok choy leaves for really cheap for like a few bucks. And that lasts to be like, I don't know, two weeks for these guys. I feed them every other day. The only other thing I feed once every week maybe is Rod's food. I love Rod's frozen food. Yes, and romaine lettuce. Right now I don't have any of the collard greens or leafy vegetables for them, so got to go to the store maybe tonight and get that for them. Uh, that's it. Bronx Reefer, what's up? What's up? What's up? I missed you guys. Good to see you all as always. I'm not into the making videos for the channel as much as I would like. I'm just way too busy, but I am going to still do it once every other week or once a week. Saturday or Sunday, I did one yesterday. I wanted to hang out with you guys now. I'm just kind of sitting on the couch. I threw my back out again two years ago. You, you remember that? Well, now it happened again, so I've just been sitting on a heating pad compounded by everything else that's going on in life. So, yeah, it's been... It's been not good. So that's the deal. By the way, um, you guys, check out my other channel. Oh, any idea of when you might get more frags? Uh, I don't know because I might be moving and I don't know what's going to happen to this tank. I don't know anything right now. So if I don't know. If I knew what was going on, if I was staying here, I'd probably... If I knew that was the case, I'd probably get one frag, put it in the five-gallon quarantine, a Duncan Coral, and get another one a month later and just go real slow and have fun with it. Um, so that's the deal on that. I was going to tell you guys something else. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a channel that I'm, that's been growing more and more that I've been spending just a little more time with that I do. Of course, you know the Joker Box and the jokerbox.com Heath Ledger impressions but the other channel yeah I know Gabriel well I might not I don't know we'll, we'll see man I, I just don't care anymore to be honest but we'll see what happens um, thank you all for your awesome support by the way um, it really means a lot I don't, I don't know what's going on I've got a few really good friends that are helping me through things and we'll see what happens um, thank you all um, yes do a search for Steve Rotter um, which is Rotter Studios. Either one, you'll come up, you'll find me. The, the, there's always a link to that channel in these video descriptions here at Rotter 2 Brief. Um, that is going to be like vlogging, me talking about just myself, what I do. I'm going to be doing some gaming on there with friends. Also, I'm going to be doing a lot of photography and video production. There's a huge Star Wars project fan film that we're making. 
I just uploaded videos of that yesterday and how I edit the sound for it. Um, so check that out. It's quite awesome. I've got a phenomenal CG animator. We're recreating the Death Star Episode 4 Death Star Trench scene. I think you, I know you guys will be amazed. Check it out. Go to Steve Rotter YouTube channel or Rotter Studios, and there's always a link in every video description on Rotter 2 Brief. So I'm going to spend a little more time on that channel as time allows, and that's what's going on. So I am very happy, and I wanted to share the news with you that my star polyps are coming back to life, and I have one small, tiny head of a frog spawn, really small, in the back of this rock. Um, so that's the deal, but like all these dudes are doing well. They're all happy, plump, and uh, they all get along great. I still have, I said, five clowns in here. One passed away. Um, but everyone's doing really well. I've had this this dude for like I think three years now. It's gonna be f is it four years? Wow. I love that guy. Yeah, the fox face. He got big. And the sailfin tang right here, and the naso tang. They. They, uh, <laughs> they were impulse buys. I saw them both, and I wanted to get one, but I knew I shouldn't add any more to the tank, and I said, screw it, let me, get, let me get both of them. So I got both of them. This is the nicest naso tang I've ever seen. He's gorgeous. His colors are so clean, but you can't see it now. And the sailfin as well is beautiful, and everyone gets along great. No one goes after anybody. This is the most you'll ever see. Hey, Casey. This is the most aggression you will ever see in my tank. This is how your fish should look, just docile, laid back, swimming around. If they're doing any fast motions or quick weird stuff up against the rocks or the sand bed, you know they've got some kind of parasite they're trying to get out of them. These dudes are all... Um, when are we going to get merch? Merch? Oh, Mandy, I'm sorry you lost your yellow tang. I know that you love the yellow tang. <clears throat> T65 gallon reef tank, what's up? Um, I was telling everybody I'm focusing on some other channels, but I am still doing Rotter 2 Brief. I'm focusing on my Steve Rotter channel on YouTube, simply called Steve Rotter. And also you can find it under Rotter Studios. I do a lot of film and photography and audio production, along with vlogging on that. So, you know, all this information is in the video description. Also, uh, an update, I'll do another video on this. Um, thanks, Casey, I appreciate it. Although the tank isn't much to look at now, if I put more effort into it and money, which I don't have any of at the moment, um, my tank would look killer. I was looking back at some old videos of my 75 gallon and even this one after it was set up and I was blown away. I was, not to pat myself on the back, but I didn't realize how nice the tank looked. Um, I was so happy. This is a 125 gallon tank, six feet long. Um, the, oh God, those tank, those two tanks looked amazing. That 75 and this 125. Um, go fund me. Yeah, I thought of that, but I feel weird asking for money. I, we would, we wanted to do a go fund me for our Star Wars film because it looks phenomenal. You can check it out at the Steve Rotter YouTube channel. What's up? Um, man, I was gonna tell you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing. I'll do a separate video on this. Like what, what's going on with the channel? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be shutting down the RoderTubeBrief.com website. I haven't been on it in a few months. More people seem to, more people are gravitating towards Facebook, which is awesome. The Facebook RoderTubeBrief group. And so for that reason, I'm going to shut down RoderTubeBrief.com. It'll probably be up for another four to five months. And uh, the main website I'm going to use is just SteveRoder.com. You see what the fox face did? He took a ride in the wave. That was pretty cool. Um, from the MP40. Um, yeah, so RoderTubeBrief.com is going to go away in a few months. I might start a Discord, which I use for my other channels. More information on that later. But my main website, if you want to keep in touch with me, is just SteveRoder.com. It'll have all my YouTube channels and writing that I do and blogging. And my main vlog will be um, Steve Rotter and...
you know what, Dave? I was going to tile my, my, the bottom of this tank, and I, I would still love to do it. Um, like black marble, right? How sweet would that be? And depending what happens with my life, I might still do that. Take the rock out, cut some nice black marble thin, lay it on the bottom. That would look really sharp. It would really make the tank pop. It would look really classy with the rock against the black marble. That would look sweet. Um, and you could, um, I'll do it when the fish are in it. You know, I'll just make sure it's all clean, everything's cool. I'll put it there in there in sections. If there's like little cracks between the marble tile, I don't care. That's easy to vacuum out. I'm not going to go caulking anything. I'm just going to cut the pieces to shape. And hey, Mitch, what's up? And I'm going to lay it in there. Or I'm right now. I don't have any plans to do anything with this tank. I got to see what goes on with my life first. Um, but that that's the deal. The website's going to go away because everyone's using Facebook anyway. The only website I'm going to keep is steverodder.com. Check it out. It's got everything that I do on that site, videos from my other channels and everything. Um, but as far as the fish stuff here, it's going to be this YouTube channel and the Facebook group, Rodder Too Brief. That's what everyone is on anyway. And I'm really proud of all you guys for helping everybody out, the newcomers and everything. It's a great community. And I'm going to still do videos once a week or once every two weeks, whenever I get time. So thanks for your support. It's good to see you guys. The fish are happy to see you too. I might start a fund me, but I don't know what for. We talked about it for our Star Wars project, like I said, but I just don't know. I, I just feel weird asking for money. But the Star Wars project, we need to hire actors and everything. It's, it's going to be quite amazing. If you want to see it, go to the Steve Rotter YouTube channel. And you're going to see what we're working on. It's quite amazing. And that, this is just rough draft stuff. Jeff, good question. The 1200, the 1200, the 12% hydrogen peroxide does not and will not hurt the fish or the coral. I've used it. I had four to six inch long green hair algae seaweed blowing in my tank. It looked like wigs. It looked like a wig in multiple places in my t It was disgusting. I couldn't get rid of it. I put that 12% hydrogen peroxide in it, one milliliter per gallon. So I was doing, I should have been doing like 12 milliliters every few days. I only did 10. Look at my tank now. It only took a week and a half and it went from swamp horror to this and it never came back because green hair algae feeds on phosphates and nitrates, right? Well, you kill the green hair algae, and it also lowers the phosphates. It does. I've done tests. Nitrates are very low, and I still dose sugar, but not as much as I do. I put one cap full, which is about 8 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in here a week just to keep things at check, and the water is crystal clear. So I put a link to the hydrogen peroxide in my last video. I got it from Amazon. It's 12% food grade. It comes in a big bottle. That's what you need to do. No more phosphate RX. No more picking stuff out by hand. No more mass water changes. None of that stuff works, you guys. I swear, this is what you need to do. Okay, and people have been emailing me saying, it works, oh my God, it works. And their tanks are crystal clear. No more green hair algae. So, doesn't hurt your fish, doesn't hurt your coral. The worst that'll happen is your coral may close up for three to four days. Because as soon as you put it in, the coral's like, oh, what is this? I don't really like it. But it doesn't hurt them at all. I'm telling you. Plus, I put a little too much in. In the beginning, I put double dose, which that's probably why my, that is why my coral closed up a little bit. But they, they opened up again after three to four days. So, yes, I highly recommend that stuff. All right. So, I'm going to get going. I'm going to feed these guys. And uh, any questions, as always, leave your comments, and I will answer them all, as I always do. Thank you so much for helping everybody out. And I'll be talking about getting rid of the website and using Discord, possibly, and what it is in the future. Okay? Take care, guys. Thanks for your support. Love you all, and happy reefing. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm kind of upbeat, Dave. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Dustin. Gabriel, thanks. Thank you. No problem. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'll have a great rest of the weekend. 
I'll talk to you guys later, all right? Thanks for watching. See ya.